Uh, so, uh, like you talked about Jetpack Compose and Swift UI. Like, I want to ask you that what is like, uh, you know, what is better, like whether Jetpack Compose or Swift UI or Flutter. Like, I think the declarative UI pattern is everywhere now. People uh, have started uh, like liking it. Everyone, like, or even on web, iOS, Android, we can see it everywhere. So what, what do you think, like how Flutter SDK uh, itself is different from like the way we write Flutter apps is different from Jetpack Compose or Swift UI, because I think you have played with both of them. So what, what's your view on that? Like how it is different or who is doing yeah. it better? Maybe that should be the question. I, yeah. So you and I talked about this <clears throat> the yeah. other day. I've played with them a little bit, a tiny bit. Uh, by no means am I educated on those two solutions, especially not at a, an architectural level, but I have gotten a feel for some of the syntax. And, uh, and there are a lot of things we could say on this. So first, let me, let me give them credit where it's due. If I was still an Android developer, 100%, I would be pulling in Jetpack Compose as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, I don't think there's any denying that moving towards declarative UI is far better, far easier to use than what's currently available on Android. And the exact same thing for iOS. To, to move out of the world of storyboards combined with uh, imperative Objective-C UI to go from that to Swift UI, 100% I would do that. Um, so any critique that I have isn't like, hey, these things shouldn't exist. If I were stuck on one of those platforms, I would adopt it in a heartbeat because I think they are significant improvements. Now, when you start talking about Swift UI and Jetpack Compose, comparing contrasting to Flutter from, let's say, an adoption standpoint, the issue here is the business value. You as a developer are going to love Swift UI over the old way. Same thing with Jetpack Compose. But your company is spending the exact same amount of money, or most of it. You will be a little bit faster with those. So you, your company will save some money. But for the most part, there are still two teams, four languages, two frameworks, and that doesn't even include the web. The business reality really hasn't changed. It's just your developer happiness that is somewhat better. And again, I give credit to that. It's better to have happier developers than unhappy developers. That's true. But when you adopt Flutter, you gain the developer happiness increase, but you also unify your language, one language instead of four, one set of UI APIs instead of two. And actually, even that's a little giving too much credit to Android and iOS because what are the odds that you are truly going to be able to move 100% to Swift UI and Jetpack Compose on day one? You probably have to support the old imperative stuff for a while in various places. That's legacy code that you're stuck with. That's why when I say four languages, that's Swift and Objective-C. Why? Because there's still a bunch of Objective-C code out there. That's Kotlin and Java. Why? Because there's still a bunch of Java code out there. So for a while, it's going to be Jetpack Compose plus the view hierarchy. It's going to be Swift UI plus the U UI view hierarchy, whatever you call yeah. that on iOS. Um, so if you move to Flutter, you just, you kill all of that legacy overnight. One language, one set of APIs, uh, and you can kind of, you still need a few experts on the platform, but beyond that, you mostly just have a Flutter team. And that includes web, by the way, and desktop. They're all Flutter developers now. That's, that goes so far beyond the language and the, and the SDK that I use. Now it's hey, the business is saving 50% on engineering payroll. And by the way, payroll is typically the number one expense for most companies, especially startups, agencies, contract shops. Saving half on, uh, on payroll is like an unbelievable advantage. So I don't know what the Swift UI and Jetpack Compose proponents uh, are, think on, on that matter. I mean, has anyone talked to you about that side of it? Have you heard anyone explaining why Jetpack Compose and Swift UI would be preferable from a business perspective? No, I mean, I, I haven't a chat with uh, like any of people. Like, I, I don't know how many people are still using it, to be honest. Like, I, I still think it's uh, it's also in a very early phase. What uh, I, I could say about Flutter as well, like a few years back, like two years back. The same thing is today with uh, Jetpack Compose or Swift UI. 
Dead Pack Compose is not ready to be honest. So as of now, what I see, like they have done uh, good work in last few months, of which uh, like uh, like a uh, uh, few weeks ago, not few weeks, like like just uh, one one week ago, I I guess they announced Android 11, and uh, now um, their APIs for Jet Pack Compose looks uh, much better to me. Uh, but from business side of view, I don't know like how many people are using it. I had like um, no any discussion with uh, any of uh, the people who are using it. But I think uh, uh, you you are right about uh, the business aspect because even if I talk about India, to be honest, uh, like there are many service-based companies, right? And uh, what they will do is that uh, they, they will always try to use something which can like, you know, which, which does not require many people uh, and uh, which can also be less expensive as compared to anything else. Like, if, if they use Flutter and if it is actually solving a particular use case, let's say they want to make an e-commerce application and it's solving that problem and it, it is giving like um, Android app as well, iOS app as well. I'm not talking about web or other platforms. Uh, let's, let's just stick to Android and iOS itself. Then also they, uh, it saves them like they, they don't need much developers. They can just have one single developer or maybe a couple of Flutter developers and uh, they can like, uh, do all that, that stuff using a single code base they, and, and their client will also be happy because uh, for, for the clients as well, I guess it, it will be lesser expensive because um, you know, obviously the number of developers are reduced and uh, even I think the hours of development will also be reduced. So that's, that's my opinion about this. But well, uh, we were talking about the technical aspects as well, right? Uh, if you remember that, uh, um, like Flutter yeah. is very easy to pick up in terms of if you want to go into detailing of how the framework is behaving, how the things are being done. But the same thing we cannot say for Swift. Yeah, maybe because I'm not a native uh, iOS developer, but for Jetpack Compose, I know like it's it's uh, it's so much to learn. It's so much to understand, and I don't know how things are working. To be honest. Yep. Yeah. So we talked about that a little bit too. And again, I'll I'll repeat that I'm not well educated on the on the implementation of those systems. But here, I'll give you the same concern that I gave you the other day, yeah. uh, which goes back to your point about declarative UI. For those watching this who, who are familiar with Flutter and you know what a widget tree is, you know that the widget tree in your code goes over to the device and what you see on that device directly correlates and connects back to that widget tree that you defined in code. Yeah. You didn't generate it you didn't imperatively construct it. You just declared one after the other, here are the widgets that I want in this configuration. And oh, look, there they are on the screen. And in fact, if you open up the Flutter tooling, you can see a live widget tree that corresponds to what's actually running on the screen of your device. Uh, this is, uh, so this leaves the world of the technical details a little bit and it gets into psychology. It gets into cognitive overhead which I actually think is far more important for software development than most technical details. But the point is, your brain no longer has to be a compiler. Yeah. You wrote the tree, you see the screen. You wanna change something on the screen, you adjust your tree. It's as simple as that. And here's the problem, at least when I, when I played around with Swift UI and Jetpack Compose, they, the same issue exists on both platforms, but for different reasons. I go to Swift UI, I, I, de I define a struct with a few configurations or something, and then I'm immediately told to start saying dot this and dot that and dot this and dot that. And I suppose that it is technically, functionally declarative UI uh, because we are not mutating objects in memory. Instead, we're creating structs and returning those structs and then creating new structs and returning those structs. But th this is like the epitome of losing the forest for the trees. This is like putting forward the technical definition and completely forgetting that there are humans that have to deal with this stuff. The reason we want to get away from imperative code is because our brains are really bad compilers. <laughs> and when we read imperative code, we are literally compiling in the human brain. So what does the widget tree do? It says no more compiling, just say what you want. It's right here on the screen. And then Swift UI comes out and says, well, we'll give you all of the technical academic versions of declarative UI, like technically we're not mutating stuff, but you're still going to invoke a bunch of functions and your brain has to keep track of what's happening to structs 
as we go through time. Um, and that's the biggest point, actually. Imperative UI is fundamentally tied to the, the movement of time into the future. Do this, then this, then this. Declarative code, I believe, when done correctly, is completely divorced from time. Like a SQL query. You don't tell the database what order to do things in at all. You just send the query and you get the data back. Same thing with Flutter widget trees. You're not telling the compositor or the renderer what order to do things. Um, you're not even telling it really what order to construct the tree. You're just stating what the tree is. Yeah. Um, so this is my big gripe with what I experienced with Swift UI. And I think it's a foundational problem. Like I cannot possibly imagine them changing that API at this point at that level. Like that is built in. You are stuck with that as far as I can tell. Uh, and so that's re it really turned me off to Swift UI and it's something I really appreciate in Flutter. If we go over to Jetpack Compose, unfortunately there's a very similar problem. Uh, now in Jetpack Compose, it's not that you're calling functions and passing structs, but, uh, and I don't know if you remember the name of the object, but there's like that magical composer object or something that's passed around, right? Do you happen to remember what that's called? I think they, they, they are just a couple of annotations which you have to specify, like uh, composable and all. I don't know exactly what, what is that object, but yeah, that's, that's how they write it. Right. So you apply these annotations to almost like snippets of code. I mean, snippets is not the technical term, but you apply this annotation to pieces of things and somehow magically, like with a wand, those things become one painting on the screen. And I completely understand that doing simple things and obvious things, you don't care about the magic. But what have we all learned year after year in our careers as professional developers? Every app includes some number of non-trivial things. And when you try to tackle those things, if you, if you come up against something that looks like magic, you are hosed because you can't debug magic. You can't engineer magic. You're, it's just like, a wall that you can't get past. Uh, and so in the Flutter team, actually there's the, they have somewhere in like their philosophy or mission statement. I forget exactly how it's worded, but it's something to the extent of easy things should be simple, difficult things should be possible. Got it. And this, that is a mindset that goes against, for example, some of the issues in the early days of Rails, Ruby on Rails, yeah. that easy things were easy, non-standard, which is what difficult kind of means, difficult things were just kind of impossible. It's like Rails just doesn't do that, sorry. Um, and I'm afraid that Jetpack Compose might get itself into that kind of situation where any developer, a five-year-old, can uh, put text on the screen and give it a color and maybe create a floating action button or something. But if you ask them to set up a user journey that's locked by authentication with different access roles and to work that into the UI, maybe suddenly like it's just unclear how you do that and there's no way to get past the magical barrier of the annotations. And by the way, the reason they're annotations is because there's a compiler build step that occurs, right? And there's an annotation processor that reads the annotation and literally generates code. So you are shipping code that's specific to your UI and you can't see it. You don't know what it is. We'll see how this turns out. This is really early days. You and I are, are making predictions here and we're just kind of talking yep. um, about what we think, but I'm worried about that. I, I'm worried that that's going to become yet another issue dragging down the effectiveness uh, of the Android APIs. I don't know either. I guess we'll find out as it begins to mature. And I'll just say for like the third or fourth time, you and I are saying this with very little insights into how it's done. Exactly. Uh, I just have my concerns about, now like the business side, we can talk about the business side because it's, it's already, that's not about Jetpack Compose, that's about using a technology specific to Android or using a technology specific to iOS. But in terms of the technical details, I'll admit maybe we're getting it wrong and, uh, if it turns out that it's that the issues that I'm talking about aren't really issues, I'll admit it and, uh, and I'll talk about it and I'll give it a fair shake. But again, I sat down, I tried to, to type out some of these solutions and, uh, and I was not impressed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we will see what happens. Okay.